Hi everybody, we are almost at the very end of the packet here and we are gonna talk about segment bisectors today. Um, so I'll go ahead and flip to where you see the vocabulary word of a segment bisector. So remember what a segment is, first of all. Um, a segment is this thing right here and notice how it has endpoints, one there and one there and it doesn't have arrows. And when there is a line that goes through it and it bisects it, that means that it cuts it into two completely equal parts. They're called congruent parts. Congruent is the fancy word in geometry that we use to say equals. Okay, and that means that this part right here equals this part right here. And you'll notice those two tick marks that we see. We mark diagrams in geometry with like tick marks like that that mean they're congruent. Sometimes you will also see them marked. I'm gonna draw a different segment. If this is a bisector, sometimes you'll just see it with one tick mark. It means that these are equal. This and this. Okay, they're two equal parts that are the exact same measure. That is what the vocab word of bisect means. And a midpoint is the point that is perfectly in the middle of the segment. B is the midpoint of AC because we have two completely congruent equal spots or equal pieces right there. All right, so those are our two new vocab words for the day. So let's see what our practice problems might look like. Um, we have a midpoint, and I know that it is a midpoint um, because of these two congruent markings right here. It means that those two segments are equal. What two segments am I talking about? This one is equal to this one. And so if the entire length from here to here is 14 and I divide it into two equal pieces, isn't 14 divided by two seven? So this part is seven and this part is seven. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here with um, FM and MD. So the entire length is 36. So if I cut it in half, that means that it is half here and half here. Half of 36 is 18. So this is 18 and this is 18. And remember that is because that these are midpoints, okay? Midpoint means it is perfectly in the middle. It's a vocab word. Um, the last one that we'll try and do, calculate the length of KM and KL. We'll remember, again, we have this little marker here, which means it's equal to that. So if this part is 10, that means that this part is also 10. Okay, how else do we do segment bisectors? I'll leave a couple of these for practice in class because they're a little bit more difficult. But I want to show you what the midpoint formula is. Do you guys know how to average stuff together? That means you add the x's and divide by 2. And then you also add the y's and divide by two. So you know what the x's and the y's are in ordered pairs, right? The first number is the x, and the second number is the y. And whenever you're asked to find what the midpoint is between two ordered pairs, you're gonna average the x values together, which means add them together, divide by two. Same thing for the y values. You're gonna add them together and divide by two. So this is the first x, and this is the first y, and this is the second x, and this is the second y. So that's why I'm gonna label them as so. And when I average them together, I'm just gonna take the x values, which is two and four, and I'm gonna average them. So it means two plus four divided by two. I'm gonna do the same thing with the y values. This was the x's. I'm gonna do the same thing with the y values and I'm gonna write it here. What we're gonna do is we are going to take our five plus three and divide by two. When you take two plus four, you get six and I need to divide it by two. And when you take five plus three, you get eight and I'm gonna divide that by two. So my midpoint, six divided by two is three, and four, eight divided by two is four. That is my midpoint. I'll put it in parentheses because it is an ordered pair. Okay, and so next you can see, it looks like this problem is the exact same as this one. So I'm gonna skip through and I'm gonna do the last one. Um, I'm gonna average the x values together. So remember, we're taking the x values, which is negative two and 10, and we're going to add them together and divide it by two. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the y values, the three and the negative one. I'm gonna take three plus negative one and divide by two. You do have to be really careful with the negative signs, okay? So we do have some negative numbers here in our ordered pairs. And just remember that this is the first x, maybe I should have written this down, and the first y, and this is the second x and the second y. Um, so we're using that formula that's at the top of the page. 
But if you know how to average things together, you just add the two things together and divide by two. So that's why I'm taking negative two plus 10 and I'm taking the three and the negative one and I'm adding those numbers together as well. You'll notice that you're always adding when you're averaging numbers together. And when there's only two numbers, you divide by two. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna take the numerator, the negative 10 plus two, that actually gives you eight. Check me in the calculator if you want to. And I'm still dividing by two. And when you do three plus negative one, that gives you two, still dividing by two. And when you take eight divided by two, you get four. And when you take two divided by two, you get one. That is the midpoint formula, you guys. That is segment bisectors. And I have one more thing that I wanna show you. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you about angle bisectors. It's the exact same thing, except it's for an angle and not a segment. So remember, here's a segment. And when it has been bisected, you'll see those little tick marks that mean that this segment is equal to this segment. This is a segment, right? So don't lose the vocabulary that we have learned um, throughout this first chapter so far. We also have an angle. You guys know what an angle looks like. Okay, so there's a big difference between a segment, that's a vocab word, and an angle, that's a different vocab word, okay? But we also have an angle bisector. And what we can do is we can have a ray shoot out right through the middle of this thing, and it cuts this angle into two different equal parts. And this is called an angle bisector. So this part equals this part. It cuts the angle perfectly in half. Okay, so that is what the vocab word says right here. It is a bisector and we have two congruent angles. This one equals this one. Those are our two angles. And that middle ray coming out, this thing is the angle bisector. Cool. Um, I'm going to go down here and just show you a couple of these. So HK, so you'll notice where HK is. Here's H, here's K with an arrow. That's HK, and it's a ray. Um, trace it with your finger. It bisects GHJ. Where's GHJ? Trace it with your finger. GHJ. Okay, so we're talking about the entire angle. Calculate the measure of the angles. GHK, what the heck's that? GHK, okay, that's the top angle. And KHJ, KHJ, that's the bottom angle. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see here, but the way these diagrams are measured here, it's telling you that from here to here is 32, this entire angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 32 and I'm gonna cut it in half, and that gives you 16, and that means that this top angle right here is 16 degrees, and this angle here is also 16 degrees. Okay, it's the measure of those angles, so we get 16 degrees. Let's try this one. We have GE, it's a ray, here's G, here's E, and it happens to be bisecting, which means cutting in half, FGH, FGH. Okay, and we need to know HGE, follow it with your finger, HGE, so the right side angle, I guess, if you will, and FGE, which is the left angle, FGE. And we are told, once again, that this from here to here, this entire big angle is 140 degrees, so if I need to know, I'm told that this is a bisector, it's cutting it in half. So I'm taking 140 and dividing by two and getting 70 degrees. And that means that this angle right here is 70 degrees and this angle right here is 70 degrees. That is a bisector, my friends. Okay, let me do this last one and then we are going to be done for the video. FJ bisects EFG, so let's find EFJ. Where the heck is EFJ? Follow it with your finger, EFJ. Okay, that's the top angle. And JFG, that's the bottom angle, okay? And if you remember, we don't have any numbers here, but actually we do. This thing means 90 degrees. It is a right angle. Okay, cool. So that means if I have an angle bisector, I'm dividing 90 by two, which gives you 45 degrees. That means that this 
angle is 45 degrees and this angle here is also 45 degrees. All right, cool, you guys, segment bisectors and angle bisectors. I'm gonna save the rest to practice in class. Thank you for watching.